Welcome to the first question. That special place here in the metaverse where we all seek the highest common denominator. And now let's join our guides to those farthest corners of our minds. Here we are with... Ladies and gentlemen, Pookie Amsterdam! And how about a warm welcome for Hydra Shafto? Welcome back to the first question. And welcome back indeed to tonight's 77th edition of the show. The first question. The quiz show to the stars. If you have an answer, we have a question. Tonight, the Studio Dome has been transformed into the Fortress of Noitude as we welcome to our stage the amazing Justice League Unlimited. I am Pookie Amsterdam, and this is Hydra Shafto. Would that be super pooky? Able to leap tall syllables at a single bound? Faster than a speeding buzzer, yes, I have the super ability to turn any three words into a game show. And I am Super Wolf, with the eight senses of veracity, sight, sound, smell, touch, hearing, spell check, water retention sometimes, and secret <laughs> word power, <laughs> which you out there don't have, and hopefully you never will. Mm-hmm. Well, we have a special panel tonight for a special cause. This group of individuals is known far and wide across the grid, inspiring goodness and sense of purpose among us. We will donate tonight, and I urge everyone in the audience to do so, for the Garden of the Missing, which helps people with their lost and missing loved ones. A depth of pathos most of us can't imagine, especially around the holiday time. Please find it in your hearts to give something. And let's bring out tonight's incredible panel, our first panelist. He is one of the two founders of the Justice League Unlimited, a public service organization who pattern their avatars after comic book heroes. Its members come from all walks of life, but include a remarkable array of professionals from creative and technical fields, artists, programmers, scientists, writers, musicians, and bon vivants. This man is a very talented gentleman and excels in many areas, just mentioned, larger than life. Look up with Kalel Venkman. Welcome, Kalel. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do for the uh, for Project Jason, the the charity uh, for the uh, for this evening's event. Yes, me too. Um, uh, tell us, Kalel, what element of the periodic table do you most identify with and why? Well, let's see. I would have to say, I would have to say Krypton, and I think the reason for that would be obvious. Mm, I think so, with every beat <laughs> of your heart. Thank I you, that's Kalel. Bad for you. That's Kryptonite. Ah. Uh, and next up. Co-founder of the Justice League Unlimited. She is for helping those in need. Look this way, and you always know who the good guys are. She's strong in all she does, and can lift a mega prim with one arm. Hey, I can do that. She, she was on some Outworld shows, too. Lost on Jeopardy, but won some of Ben Stein's money. Soar to new heights with Kara Timtam. Welcome aboard, Kara. Thank you. I am so excited to be here. <laughs> I'd we be are excited, excited to too. Stein. I am. Great. Well, what's your element, Kara? Well, I had to answer Krypton just like Cousin here, but mostly because it is a noble gas and because it glows a beautiful yellow green. Mm, Wasn't I like Superman's dog things. named Krypton? That's Crypto. Crypto. Mm -hmm. oh, He's crypto. a good dog. I know. You know you know, no one ever talks about ignoble gases. Uh, let's Only after we've been eating <laughs> food and we prefer not to talk about Oh, all oh, right. Um, this <laughs> panelist, he joined the Justice League last November and loves every moment of it. 
so his time on the league, he has grown close to many and appreciates the work that they do. He educates also in many ways and is always looking to help the community. In real life, he works for NASA. Deliver yourself from harm with Maverick Runfeld. Welcome, Maverick. It's great to be here tonight. Thank you, Maverick. Really great to see you. What element of the periodic table do you most identify with and why? Tell us. Well, I kind of figured everyone was going to go with Krypton, so I decided to go with Iron. And that's because I tend to have a strong resolve with what I do, and I tend to be very firm with what I believe in, and I'm steadfast when I support the people I care about. So that's... that sounded great to me. That's oh, wonderful. that was well said. Is it, don't you think an iron makes us all very magnetic because we have it in our blood? So yeah, thank next, you. And last stop. In real life, he is an ex-Navy nuclear submariner and now works information at a nuclear power plant. He is a ham radio operator and a uniformed volunteer at the local county sheriff's office and second life he owns the assistance notification network helping people and reporting problems he was green before it became trendy green lantern excelsior welcome aboard green lantern thank you hydra and uh, good evening to you this is a pretty neat little venue here thank you and that is my favorite superhero by the way <laughs> you're a mm -hmm. man of good taste Very yes I, well i know i'm a man of good taste <laughs> So what's your element? <laughs> well, I said my element was number 17, chlorine. I'm green and I'm dangerous in large quantities. But that I'm a good guy, too. Good. It, yeah, right, yes. Well, I said I was a good guy, too, because I make your whites whiter and your water safe to drink. Mm -hmm. I actually <laughs> tried, eating a, I tried eating a pellet of chlorine when I was a kid. That didn't go over well. Mm, did it, did it, I was going to ask if it made your whites whiter, but we'll just move on. How did that come out for you? Not very well, actually. <laughs> mm, well, that's okay. That was then. This is now. And thank you very much, panel. You are inspiring. Now it's time for Yamey or Namey. Each panelist will get a truth or not a truth and attempt to tell us if it is or if it ain't. It's a yay or nay. Give us your answer and win a point. Or not. All right. Our first yay me or nay me is for Kalel. Kalel, a four-minute YouTube video of attacking robots has led to a $30 million Hollywood contract. Yes, that's true. Yes, you're right. You get a point. Fide Alvarez's short firm panic attack made on a budget of $300 has led to Hollywood calling. Very good, Kalel. And number two is for Kara. If you have a secret knock, you can open a locked door with knocking alone. Nay. And it's actually a yay. A do-it-yourself secret door lock using a piezo speaker, mm -hmm. a tiny gear reduction motor, and Arduino. And PVC pipe did it. Drat. <laughs> All right, Maverick, a new iPhone application analyzes your partner's snoring for signs that they are dreaming about someone else. Oh, there's a ridiculous amount of applications out there, so I am going to go with yay. Actually, that's a nay for US 299 Remote Analysis. will analyze your snoring, but advise if the patient should seek medical help or not. It uh, matches the patient's snoring to a bank of pre-recorded snores, not pre-recorded sighs. And number four is for Green Lantern. Thomas Edison will go down in history as never having received a Grammy. I would say that's a yay. That's actually a nay. He will receive a special merit award from the Recording Academy this January. Never too late. Kalel, bacon lip balm is a... Bacon lip balm is a new product on the market. 
bacon lip balm. I like bacon. <laughs> well, I've seen things like uh, hats made out of raw meat on the internet, so I'm going to try for a yay on this one. Oh, well, you got that right, Kalo. <laughs> I've, I've seen the ad. It was too. It was too <laughs> stupid and bizarre not to be true. Yeah, like, I think I like the Virgin be- Mary on a toast. <laughs> <laughs> Bacon lip balm. Mwah. Bacon lip balm. Yeah, they used to market it as lard. Now it's. Lip balm. <laughs> 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 it's all about the packaging. <laughs> and number six is for Kara. For those who need to know what they are doing every hour and who also need to know what time it is, there is the new dry erase clock. I'll say yay. That's a yay. Wow. All right. Yeah. Amazing. There's no product that's too stupid to exist. It's just uh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> and it'll <Fabric>. be USB. <laughs> I still haven't seen the belly buttons, the sweater made out of belly button lint. Okay, Matt. There's a reason for that it's... because the fibers aren't long enough to, to knit. It's the okay. short staple. I see you've tried it. That's great. Maverick, uh, <laughs> here we go. Or yay me or nay. You can rate websites and restaurants on the web. Now you can also go to ratemywaitress.com and ratemycashier.com. Signs of a downturned economy. Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I'm going to go with nay. That sounds like that's definitely crossing a line there that... It's tough to track, so That's, nay. Okay, you're right. That's a pookie made that up. But you can rate my doctor and rate my cop dot com. Mm, how about rate my superhero? <laughs> and number eight is for Green Lantern. The Royal Academy of Sciences in Paris has refused to even read proposals dealing with perpetual motion machines for more than two hundred and thirty years. I would believe that's a yay. That is a yay. So many inventors have claimed that they've built such devices over the years that they're tired of wasting their time. We are just not wasting our time. All right, Kalel, an X-ray slap has been given to the new almost Earth-like planet discovered recently, Super Earth G J one two fourteen. Uh, could you repeat the question? Sure. I, I don't understand. All right, an, an X- X-ray. Slap. An x ray slap. That's the term has been an given. X ray slap. An x ray slap. Slap. Mm. Has been given to the new almost Earth like planet discovered recently, which is called Super Earth G. J. Oh, boy. You know, this this would have been a question Maverick could have answered probably pretty easily. I don't know. I'm. I'm going to guess I'm going to say yay. It's a nay. The X-ray slap is a way of deflecting a near-Earth object by exploding a nuclear device in its vicinity when just go away isn't enough. <laughs> ah, I see. <laughs> just and this, number 10 for Kara. All meteorites that fall to Earth are protected under the National Heritage Law and must be surrendered to the nearest authorities. I'm going to say nay. That is a nay. Though that's almost a gay, unless you found it in South Africa where you can keep it. All right, Maverick, for just $223,000, you can have your own robotic duplicate, a life sized humanoid robot that can even speak with your voice. I'm going with nay. That's a yay. Thanks to a deal between Kokoro, maker of Actoid robots and department store chain Sogo and Cebu in Japan, you can. But can it Twitter for you? <laughs> <laughs> and number 12 is for Green Lantern. You'll soon be able to use the iPhone to remotely control a desktop computer. I have to say yay. Makes sense to me. That's a yay. A patent was just filed last week by Apple Computer to use your iPhone to remotely control the movement of a cursor on the remote iMac or MacBook, launching applications and selecting options. Oh, All that's, right. that's funny because my Droid phone has that already. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm surprised that it's, it's uh, <laughs> I'm surprised that this is a new thing for an iPhone. I thought they would have had that years ago. 
Isn't that Came funny? Up. Well, you see, you learn something new every first question, Kalal. Nice. You have to, you have to I, come indeed. around more often. Yeah. And this is for you. A done for log on the Isle of Call within the Scottish Herbities is the ruined remains of a fortress where William Wallace battled the British. Um, I'm sorry, that, that my question? I, that was your statement, yeah. Is it true or false? That that kind of grabbed me in the uh, same place, Kalel. Uh, yeah. I would say that was true. That's a nay. I, oh. The naturally he didn't fight knoll. the British out in the Hebrides. Yeah, the the that's just a naturally rocky knoll with absolutely no history at all. In other words, it's boring. <laughs> and next up, number fourteen for Kira. The rumored name for the new Google phone, Nexus 6, is similar to the Nexus 6 brain unit from Philip K. Dick's 1968 novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? I wouldn't put it past them. Let's say yay. It's a nay, actually. It's called the Nexus 1. Uh, okay, Tricky. Maverick. Oh. This is for you. Women's need for control just got stronger with the Femphonic audio jacket that has a nifty joystick controller for an iPod built right into the sleeve. A joystick controller? I'm going to go nay. That doesn't sound right. It, that's a yay. There oh. is in the Femphonic <laughs> iPod joystick control. She wants it. She's got to have it. And number 16 for Green Lantern. Your face might not be enough to stop a clock yet, but it can unlock a door. I have to say yay on that. People recognition, etc. The China Vision face recognition door lock that recognizes faces in three dimensions. Right. Well, well done, panel. Look at that score. It's two, two, one, and three. It is anybody's game at this part as we go on to the audience as it's time to play they said what audience only compete for a limited edition prize by guess who originated this famous quote please type it out in local chat and the quote is be your own hero it's cheaper than a movie ticket and i'll repeat the quote is be your own hero it's cheaper than a movie ticket it wasn't Oprah, it wasn't Dr. Phil, it wasn't Stan Lee or uh, or Ozzy Osbourne. Eric Clapton. <laughs> I'm, reading, I'm reading these answers go by, and, and I don't know the answer to this one either. No, it's Before definitely not Octomom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, Stan Lee wants us to buy more tickets and everything. Uh, not Walt Disney. Nope, nope. Be your own hero. It's cheaper than a movie ticket. I love that quote. And perfect for tonight. And oh, Gary Bruno. Gary got it. That's Doug Horton. All right. Gary, who is becoming our undisputed king of quotes, batting a thousand. Well, to be or not to be, this panel is. And what superpower would you have if you could choose only one? Think about that while we're gone. Be right back. The Splo, it's Second Life's first interactive science museum. Come play with and even laugh at exhibits of science, illusion, and art. Trigger a chain reaction made of ping pong balls on mousetraps, shoot a playing card in half in slow motion, or experience a meteorite impact on Mars. You can even ride the Big Bang, all at the Sploland Sim. See you there! When does it start? Every Tuesday night, Doctor, at the same time. 7 p.m. Pacific each week. And uh, what happens? The Tinies, Cat and Emmo, open, and they are the most hilarious opening act anywhere. I see. Uh, yes, uh, and then? Oh, my God, the show is so funny. Funny, we have the intelligentsia of Second Life on, and they are brilliant. It's great. 
The audience is the best in Second Life. Hmm, uh, what else, Pookie? My co-host is this amazingly gorgeous wolf. Well, what seems to be the problem? No problem at all, Doctor. I want you on the show. I'll do anything to get a great panelist. Welcome back to the first question. And welcome back. So what superpower did you want to have, hmm? I can think of a few I'd like, but it's time for a nugget of knowledge. Will Hydra Supermind defeat the mighty Justice League as they bring on their awesome combined force of mental energy? Or will the Wolfman stand undefeated against them on his quest for Nugget domination? Uh, Pookie, weren't you going to do the Nugget of Knowledge this week? Uh, uh, Hydra, standing strong and brave, unrelenting against the combined forces of the super-heroic... Pookie, this was your week. Um, well, Hydra, you, you know what a traditionalist I am. I, I, it just didn't seem right to go out of the decade without you mining the last nugget. Okay, I get it, Super Chicken. All right, my superpower is not laying eggs. Let's get that straight. Okay, let's go to the panel and ask them what their nugget of knowledge are. This is Kalel's. Under Earth's normal gravity, under Earth's normal gravity, carbon dioxide can exist in a liquid form. Uh, I know that there are carbon dioxide clathrates on the bottoms of very deep oceans, um, but I believe those are solid and in the form of ice. I'm going to say no. No, it can't because clathrates are solids. All right, Kalal. You are correct. The only way, the only way it can exist in a liquid form is uh, in environments on other worlds that uh, where there there's a high amount of pressure and a low temperature. Mm-hmm. Mm, all I think right. Titan, you're you're is, correct. Yeah, Titan right. is one such environment. That's right. Okay, then this is Kara Tim Tam's nugget of knowledge. Are you ready, Hydra? Always. It's a small world opened to the public for the first time at Disneyland in 1965. It's a small world after all, um, but I don't know the year it opened. <laughs> yeah, well, so I'm going to have to take a guess on that. I love that ride. It's one of my favorites. Uh, but Disney World, didn't that Disneyland. open? Disneyland. Oh, Disneyland. Okay, that's different. Because I was about to say Disney World didn't exist then. Uh, I'm going to say that's true. That is yeah. false. Um, you got me then. What I was did. the year? <clears throat> it opened at Disneyland in 1966, but two years earlier, it opened at the Pepsi Pavilion and the, at the New York World's Fair in 1964. Wow. And All I was right. there. How cool is that? It's a small world, and you know, it's still... I wasn't a, even born. It's still a small <laughs> world. I want to hear that. And we're <laughs> in it. Well, you know, light bulbs were invented before you were born too, Hydra. All right. Maverick, this is Maverick Grunfeld's nugget of knowledge. Bum, bum, bum. Astronaut Jim Lovell uttered the words, Please be informed that there is a Santa Claus whilst on board Apollo 8. Uh, let me think. I have no clue about what he said. Apollo 8 was an orbiter. It didn't go to the moon. Um, it went to the North Pole. Quite yeah. obviously. I'm going to say it's true, but I'm taking a guess on that. You're actually correct. It is true, but Apollo 8 did leave Earth. It orbited the moon and returned. It never landed on the moon, though. It was the first crap to leave. But on Christmas Day in 1968, Lovell did say that on the return trip to Earth. 
Ah, okay. I bet he would. And too bad he didn't have his flip phone. He could have taken a picture of it. <laughs> All right, and this is Green Lantern Excelsior, whose nugget is, you should never throw rice on the ground at weddings because birds eat it, it swells up in their little wee stomachs, and it kills them. Uh, I know you can blow seagulls up with Alka-Seltzer, so... <laughs> <laughs> From experience? I want to see that. I definitely know what happens. <laughs> uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let me think. Well, rice does swell up, and mm -hmm. a bird's stomach doesn't have that high of an acid content, so I'm going to say that that's true, just by seeing the seagull exploding Alka-Seltzer bombs. Well, that is actually a an urban legend, and it couldn't be true because otherwise you'd see piles of dead birds all around the rice paddies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who made it up. But it and you don't need a flip phone for that, let me tell you. <laughs> okay, well, I'm two for four. Not bad. All right, well, thank you very much. And now we're going to bring out Word Up. Super words from super people on this fabulous last edition of the decade. Each panelist will tell us their invented word and attempt to make it fly. I'll say each word after the panelists presented to give that word that little extra something something. When Pookie <laughs> says vote afterwards, the audience will be using the vote boxes to award points. Please just type it in like it says it on the box. Forward slash one forward slash two, forward slash three, forward slash four. And our they, of course, correspond with the panelists that you want to win. Oh, yeah. Our voting board will show the points accumulating right before your very eyes. Clear winner, four points for tie three each. And those who haven't won, they get a point because mm, I said so. Word up. Please say your made-up word and give us a ten word or less definition. Or give us the definition. Kalel Venkman. My word is programmator. It's mm. a combination of computer programmer and computer animator. Uh, quite a combo. All that. Okay, Kara Tintum, your word up. The word is compugeeled, which is when your computer slows down due to lag or bloatware, a most useful word for Second Life. Mm, Compugeal. All right, thank you. And Maverick Runfeld. My word is Cape Fatner, because after a long day of flying around in Sims, you know, your cape gets dirty, it gets wrinkled, so you need something to flatten it out. So I'm trying to sell these things. They're cheap, and there's a ton of heroes out there. <laughs> No uh, capes. There you go. Cape Flatner. <laughs> you need that. Yes, Cape Flatner. <laughs> and it will be available on X Street uh, soon. That's great. Okay, it thank you. It looks like a prim, like a cube that like has wood and texture on it. It's just a prim, <laughs> but it works. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay, and Green Lantern Excelsior, your word up. All right. Well, my word is automagically. And it's defined as when something happens automatically, but the way it happens still seems like magic. Oh, Ooh, I like that one. Can I vote yeah. for you? That is a good Sure, Of course you can vote for him. All right. Well, that is very exciting. And uh, audience, get ready to vote on your favorite word. It's time to vote for Word Up. And the first word from Kalil was programmator. The second word from Kara was compugeal. The third word from Maverick was cape flatter. And the fourth word from Green Lantern was automagically. So that's programmator, compugeal, cape flatter, and automagically. I like that automagically. That is very, yeah, very. Yeah, I've heard that one before. Have you really? Where have you heard it, Hydra? I'm, I'm a furry. That's used pretty often. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of our words. One of, one of our words. I like it. Well, now we're in with the 
with the R word club, and hopefully that will be a word that is, uh, well, they're all pretty good, and I think they're all going to go on the Pookiepedia. All right, so let us count down, and we're going to go 4, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and a half. Uh, one, and I'm going to have to make these babies stop counting, and as soon as they do, we'll see what we've got. Oops, I typed that in the wrong place. So this, I love the way everything is so uh, automagical here <laughs> with my voting cubes, and we have a tie between Kalel and the lovely Kara. I'm sh- with five points and followed up by Green Lantern and then Maverick. So, oh no, we have a clear win by Kalel. That was all the, uh, we have a clear win by Kalel. So, this is so exciting. When we come back, that scoreboard is going to look a whole lot different. Yes. So, be right back. Stay where you are. We'll come back very soon. Be right back. When does it start? Every Tuesday night, Doctor, at the same time, 7 p.m. Pacific, each week. And uh, what happens? The Tinies, Cat and Emmo, open, and they are the most hilarious opening act anywhere. I see. Uh, yes, uh, and then? Oh, my God, the show is so funny. Funny, we have the intelligentsia of Second Life on, and they are brilliant. It's great. The audience is the best in Second Life. Hmm, uh, what else, Pookie? My co-host is this amazingly gorgeous wolf. Well, what seems to be the problem? No problem at all, Doctor. I want you on the show. I'll do anything to get a great panelist. Welcome back to the first question. Welcome back. Gee, I missed you. I'm going to miss you over the holiday break, but now it's time for Avataro E. Avataro. Panelists against each other. The type A as an awesome personality game we do love to play. All right, first question. He was a philanthropist from Kansas City who started off poor but made his fortune in cable television and long-distance calling. Given a free dinner when he was down on his luck, this act inspired him to pay it forward to the tune of $1.3 million, which he gave out during his lifetime. His philanthropy has been supported and recognized by a number of well-known people, including Dick Butkus, who actually helped him out as an elf. Who was this man who inspired the great secret Santa tradition? Who was the man that inspired the great secret Santa tradition? The first one. And he's been recognized by... Yes, Green Lantern. Ray Kroc? Uh, No, not not Ray Kroc, no. You'll shoot your eye out. Kansas City. Really uh, fantastic. And he just outed himself, but before he died, he passed away. He wanted to tell his own story. Uh, remarkable. Oh, it's got to be somebody dead. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say Ted Turner, but I guess not. No. Well, someone cable gave cell. him dinner in 1979, and that was um, someone in the audience who said it. Oh. I'm going to count down. Ten. Nine, eight. Yes, Kalel. Larry Stewart. Yes, you're absolutely right. Larry Stewart, the first secret Santa. And question number two. The Sparrow and Professor X had the power of using their minds to control objects. Is it far off in the future when the rest of us mere mortals will be able to do the same? No. In this game, a nozzle of air, upon which a ball floats, over a board and through obstacles, is actually controlled by the human mind. 
players put on a headset with a forehead sensor and clips that attach to the earlobes. These accessories allow the game to read your brain waves, changing them into information that the game board can understand. What is this first-person thinker game called? Oh, boy. I, I want one. Isn't that an amazing game? The game changes your thoughts into energy that can be read. Kara? It's the Force. No. Isn't it? <laughs> no, that's what Jedi no. use. No, no the, but no, no. There's a there's a game. It's it's it was the marketed. first. No, the first prophecies doesn't uh, Not, only moves the ball up and down. It doesn't move it around in a track. Oh, that's right. Someone in the uh, it's the other one, the more expensive it, one. <laughs> uh, Maverick. I'm going with the mind flex. I saw somebody in the audience say it looked good to me. That's right. It's the mind flex, and this actually just moves the ball up and down, and you move the track yourself. That's right. You see Mattel doing mind control, and it's not just Barbie reading what Ken's thinking either. Yeah, okay. I asked for one for Christmas, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and you also want a robotic hamster. I hope yep. Santa's listening, because he does exist, obviously, according to Jim Lowell. Okay. It increases efficiency and understanding of patterns, integral and necessary to nature and humanity's working systems. It describes a rectangle with a length roughly one and a half times its width. Many artists and architects have fashioned their work around it, the pyramids, the Parthenon, and the Mona Lisa. The eyes scan an image the fastest when it is shaped with this proportion, and understanding of it is proving compelling in unifying vision, thought, and movement under a single law of nature's design. What is it, Kalel Venkman? The golden mean or the golden rectangle? I'll go for that. Yes, indeed. The golden ratio or the golden rectangle. All right. And question number four. Golden dog. This uses a flexible technology <laughs> platform for tissue construction and organs on demand for replacement surgery. It allows scientists to place cells of almost any type into a desired pattern. The 3D bioprinter has one print head for placing human cells and the other for placing a hydrogel, scaffold, or a support matrix. The cells used by the device need to be the cells of what is being regenerated. Building an artery requires arterial cells, for example. Because the patient's own cells are used, the new organ will not be rejected by the body. Who are the engineers on the project? Organovo, the regenerative medicine company work with. Who are the engineers on the product? I believe they were from Australia. This is Organs on Demand for Replacement Surgery, a 3D wow. bioprinter. How far out is that? I... I don't know, but I want one for my sprained ankle. Green Lantern? Invitec. Uh... Buki? Unitech, yeah. That, I'll yeah, take that's that. close enough. Yeah, that's good. Absolutely. Very good. All right. She is the daughter of a magician and a mystic, plus a direct descendant of the alchemist Nicholas Flamel. Her childhood friend gave her the Da Vinci Notebook. She makes her living as a stage illusionist and was the subject of the first major comic book crossover in 1964, beginning her somewhat passionate and, of course, difficult relationship with Batman. Superheroes have complicated romances. A powerful sorceress, she usually casts spells by speaking verbal commands backwards. Who wears a top hat, is a member of the Justice League, and has a great pair of legs. Yes, Kalel. In fishnets, in fishnet stockings, it's Zaytana. Yes, it is Zaytana, indeed. I think I found my superheroine. Muni Mula, which is, of course, aluminum spelled backwards. <laughs> okay. Kepler, uh, number six, Kepler Motors Motion is founded by the only living person to hold world speed records on land and water. Russ Wick's company has used the Dubai International Motor Show to unveil its 800 horsepower supercar. It launches the motion car to 60 miles per hour in under 2.5 seconds with a top speed of more than 200 miles per hour. Incredibly spe incredible specs, great looks, and an impressive bloodline. 
but it's not horse racing. If you have to ask how much, you probably can't afford it. How many of these ultra-high-performance, exclusive, hand-built supercars will be built? Can you believe that? 800 horsepower? 60- I want that for Christmas, too. Whoa, whoa. Kara? 15. No. That was a good guess. Maverick? I'm going with five. No. It's more than that. Someone in the audience has said it. Green Lantern? Only one. No. One is not more than five. (laughs) (laughs) It's not. (laughs) <laughs> that time I checked. Karen gets something for that. Absolutely. Wow. She is. I lost my comparison powers. Okay, one more try. One more try. The audience All is right. helping you. Um, you got to push the buzzer. 50. Okay, Kalel. Yeah, that's 50. right. It's 50. 50 okay. only. I got 50. it from the audience. I wouldn't have known. That's why they're great. Got it from Gary Oh yeah. You can. Yay, Gary. They are the best audience anywhere. All right. This DC comic character debuted in 1955. He can shapeshift. He can alter the chemical makeup of his body, be invisible, pass through solid objects. He is powerful. He is a powerful telepath capable of both perceiving the thoughts of others and projecting his own. He often acts as a switchboard between minds in order to coordinate the Justice League's actions. Superman once called him the most powerful being on the face of the earth. When a flame-wielding villainess named Scorch wanted his telepathic help in dealing with her own mental issues... She helped him redefine his traditional aversion to fire. He is now invulnerable Mm -hmm. to flames unless they are flames of passion. Again, superheroes have complicated love lives. Although in Kingdom Come, he was shattered by human weakness. Who is John Johns, also referred to as? Yes, Kara. The Martian Manhunter, and we Mm. miss him. Yes, indeed. The Martian Manhunter. Bum, bum, bum. And question number eight. Cyborg insects are now equipped with a transponder that uses this fuel source. The prototype micro micro electromechanical systems, or MEMS, transmitter, could operate autonomously for decades. The goal is to power the insects developed for DARPA. The high MEMS program, which is approaching its fourth year, has already grown several kinds of insects, moths and beetles, with implanted control electronics. With such controls, they can be driven by a remote operator for stealth applications and disaster response. What is this new bioengineer bug powered by? Peanut butter. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> if only. That's what children are powered by. Oh. I read about this, but I can't remember what the power source is. Isn't that amazing? They're growing bugs powered by... Well, there's a hint when it said it can run for decades. Mm-hmm. A half-life of 12 years. It's another one. Green Lantern? Radioactivity. That's right. Radioisotopes. Eek! Is that insane? I Big mean... Bugs. I should know that working at a nuclear power plant, right? Yeah. I hope so. A, a radioactive bugs come And if it at bites you. you, you become Spider-Man, Spider-Man, right? yeah. <laughs> well, I guess they don't need a nightlight to take a pee at midnight. I think that's better than <laughs> Mothman. <laughs> All right, next question. An American science fiction writer who also had groundbreaking science fiction anthologies with dangerous visions. He was born in Cleveland, Ohio, and moved to California in 1962, where he wrote for TV, including Star Trek. He also wrote for The Flying Nun and The Man from Uncle. Given enough time, he could have written for The Nun from Uncle. He used the pseudonym Cold Winterbur to alert members of the public when he he felt his written contribution had been mangled beyond repair. Who is he? Green Lantern. Harlan Ellison, Dangerous Visions. I have it right here on the bookshelf. Uh huh. Harlan oh, Ellison. I thought I beat you to that one. He's my oh, yeah. You saw that coming. I had to do that. And the name Cordwainer Bird was used in the credits of this TV series called The Star Lost, which really? truly, des- 
which was truly deserving of every bit of disdain Harlan could heap upon them. <laughs> you hear I love a that nice he had it. I'm sorry, if anybody's good at heaping disdain, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> and number 10. Most soldiers don't sign up to fight deadly viruses and bacteria, but that's more that's what more than 2,300 young Seventh-day Adventists did when drafted by the U.S. Army. As conscientious objectors during the Cold War who interpreted the Bible's commandment, Thou shalt not kill, very literally, many volunteered instead to serve as guinea pigs for testing vaccines against biological weapons. Ouch. Volunteers recalled being quite sick from diseases such as the mysterious Q fever. Happily, none died during the secretive trials, which took place from 1954 to 1973. What was this operation called? Pretty amazing. Oh. Yeah. Testing out deadly viruses and bacteria. Okay, I'm going to count down soon. Uh, Maverick, go ahead. I'll go with White Coat. That's right, Operation White Coat. Very good, yes. And I can't even imagine. All right, next question. And it is a tight race in here between Kalel and Green Lantern. They are neck and neck. There are still enough questions. It could be anybody's show as we go on into the last 10 minutes. All right. You are cooking something in the microwave and you are standing there totally bored out of your mind. Well, there is hope. Researchers in Japan have come up with the perfect solution for those of us who need to be entertained every minute of every day by putting a, are you ready, video player on your microwave screen. So when the cooking time is entered, a special Adobe Air app retrieves a video from YouTube, keeping you entertained down to the very last second. However, be warned, because the films are chosen based purely on their running time, there is no way to control which clips are displayed. That could cause a problem for those with weak hearts or impressionable minds. What won the Outstanding Performance Award in the Jury Special Award in Japan's mashup? A video screen on your microwave, so you don't have to be bored even for one second. Am I the only one that thinks that's really pathetic? <laughs> I think that's no, hilarious. Not. Emerald Charming is asking, how long is two girls, <laughs> one cup? I love it. <laughs> YouTube away, brilliant. Avnish Kazam Jowitz. You don't even know what that is, do you, Pook? Kara? Kara. Um, I'm going to swipe this from the audience. They say cast oven. That's know. right. Cast, oh, okay. oven, cast oven is right. How do you I, I thought that was, a, that was a YouTube movie about um, coffee. Mm. Okay, next, next shake, question, Hydra. <laughs> shake them, Abba. I'll, I'll have to show you after the show <laughs> what that was, Fuki. <laughs> okay. You don't, you don't have, Hydra, first. if you say it like that, you don't have to show me. <laughs> okay, number 12. You don't want to know. <laughs> you really don't want to know. I can't number believe 12. you know, Kalel. Can you believe he knows? I can believe he knows anything. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to know what that is, Pookie. Really. X-ray vision I'll show you is, is very revealing. <laughs> anyway, number 12, before I totally lose it here. Uh, but boxing is a boxing video game for mobile phones. In it, you choose to play either Bush or Kerry to fight out the 2004 Skull and Crossbones United States presidential election. The candidate chosen must fight through a number of preliminary rounds, including an ugly one with Dick Oil, Ken Cheney, in order to eventually fight the opposition. The game is a first-person boxing game, as opposed to a first-person voting game, which we saw in the Florida election in 2000. Seen from, Can you say electile dysfunction? <laughs> <laughs> Seen from behind the player's gloves, Bush versus Kerry boxing features many prominent politicians from around the time of the 2004 presidential election. Hillary Clinton is the referee. And who is the ring girl? I'm going to take a wild guess and Maverick? say Nancy Pelosi. No. Nope. 
I don't think she was uh, that prominent in the 2004 presidential election, but somebody is the rather scantily clad. I'm, I've been informed ring girl. It is a tough one. Uh, it's about Someone as, in the audience has said it, though. It's about as rough as seeing John Kerry dancing with a G-string on in Second Life for the Netroots Jeez. convention. <laughs> yes, Kara? I'm going to guess um, uh, Monica Lewinsky. No. no. Because it was too soon for Sarah Palin. Mm -hmm. Green Lantern? Ralph Nader. That's right, it was Ralph Nader. Ralph Nader, all right. And now me. we have a tie between Kalel and Green Lantern as we move on. We just have about two, three questions left. Software designer Boris Smuss has created something to help you pound out the rhythm you feel, turning an ordinary item into something special. The prototype system consists of two square force sensitive resistors located on the knee of your jeans leg that are hooked up to an Arduino device and a breadboard that sits inside the pocket. The wires connecting are held in place with electrical tape and every time a pad is hit, the impact is relayed to a computer. The system is built entirely into a pair of pants. So it is isn't transferable to other items of clothing. Yes, they are drum pants. What is the first descriptive word to their title? The mm, drum pants. Yes, Green Lantern. Ubiquitous. Ubiquitous drum pants. All right, next question. Go for it, Hydra. Question number 14. Two portable pocket devices come together for an amazing new invention, the flash harp which combines the flash drive and the harmonica. The flash harp is a fully functional three and a quarter inch 10 hole harmonica made from stainless steel, brass reeds, and a plastic comb, just like the real ones. At one end protrudes the USB connections of the flash drive, which is covered by a cap when not plugged in. It's currently available in two digital storage sizes, two gigabit and four gigabit, but only in the key of C. Who invented it? We'll either take his profession or his name or both. Isn't that so cool? Oh. The flash harp, a flash, a USB flash drive and a harmonica. Well, we know it wasn't Wally West. <laughs> it's the flash, yes. Mm, this profession might be a little easier. Kara's um, got it. Kara? I'm, I'm, I'm wild guess of someone who plays harmonica is Bob Dylan, but that's not gonna... No. I got nothing. All right, let's count, count them down. Huh? The Doing four. By a music teacher named Jim McLean. Oh, right. There you go. All right. Isn't it? Okay, this is uh, this is next question, and we'll see how it goes. This is a robot we can all feel close to here in Second Life, and so the clue in the name. It is from Ford, a tactile robot arm used to evaluate the interior of car models. The intent is to make the testing process more uniform and scientific. Ford says it's the first car maker to use a robot to test interiors, to better respond to customer expectations for quality ones, testing roughness and temperature on points like the steering wheel, knobs and armrests, manipulating them and adjusting air vents. Much easier than getting some smelly laid-off factory worker inside these new vehicles. The roboticized <laughs> unit for tactile Utility and haptics is better known as what? Roboticized unit for tactility and haptics is better known as what? Yes, Green Lantern. Ruth, just like the Avatar. Mm-hmm. It's Ruth. It's Ruth. Uh-huh. And Green. <laughs> no way. Green Lantern. Oh, someone, someone at Ford must be here in this room in Second yes. Life. Huh. <laughs> you better believe it. Somebody's downloading that USB port right from my left ear into their computer. Green Lantern Excelsior, you are the winner of tonight's show. And oh, my God. Congratulations. Yay, Destin. Wow. Prize ball. These balloons are for you. See, I'm glad my favorite superhero won, but he's still not as awesome as Galactus. 
He's awesome, Hydra. He's awesome. Yay, Green Lantern. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I get and to pop now, the now? If you want. And now, audience, will you take us out tonight? Who originated this famous quote? If we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. And I'll say it again. If we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. And it wasn't Ren to Stimpy. Oh, <laughs> Gary Bruno. You are amazing, Gary Bruno. Batting Gary Bruno said it. 10,000, the king of quotes. It was Mother Teresa. And so this season, remember that we are all in this as one. And we do belong very much to each other. That's very true, Hydra. And we will belong back in the dome in the new year, new decade. This is the last show of 2009. So we will see you all January 5th, 2010. Did you make any new, re new Year's resolutions, Pookie? I don't drink, I don't smoke, and I don't chase men. Do you, do you have any suggestions, Hydra? Slower mm, men. <laughs> you, could, you could always take up eating planets. <laughs> That's what Galactus maybe, does. Maybe bacon lip balm. <laughs> 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 You won't live for a long time, but it'll seem like forever. Uh, it looks like uh, Mundo gets to keep his money tonight because no one guessed the secret word. And mm -hmm. the word was sparkling. Sparkling. Yes, it was a sparkling time tonight. It's a sparkling. Of no attitude. Stay tuned here to the Studio Dome, where we will see you January 5th, 7 p.m. on Tuesday, the only place to be on a Tuesday night. Thank you for watching, and to all who tune in, enjoy the holiday. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, we love you all. Thank you. And our eternal thanks to Rob Wag the Soothsayer, who is our head stage manager and director to the stars, Pet Love Pet Shop. And a special thanks to our guru, Paradox Olbers. And thank you to the panel. Thank you, panel. And thank you all for coming. Remember, the show will be available tomorrow on iTunes. Either go to iTunes and search for the first question or go to the Treat Archive site, podcast link, and subscribe from there. A big shout-out to Ariana and a bigger shout-out to Rebecca. And thank you, Hydra. Thank you, Pookie. And good night and happy holidays, Mr. Rosedale, wherever you are.